Good evening, all my Dharma friends, my beautiful friends. <clears throat> Earlier, we had a little bit of talk about attachment and non attachment. And uh, it's perfect uh, for the start tonight. And uh, first, uh, I want to read a text uh, sent from my friend. This came from an excerpt uh, from uh, uh, Einstein. Make a mistake. Mistakes is a part of the J. I don't know. A lesson we all can learn from to err is human. We are perfect for who we are. And this lesson from Albert Einstein, all we have the same teaching, recognize mistakes, accept mistakes, and learn from mistakes. So this is the text that my friend sent it to me. And uh, you ready to listen to my mistakes? <laughs> Earlier today, I went to uh, 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 King County's uh, uh, court to pay my fine. <laughs> And uh, uh, I drove six miles over 20 miles limited zone. School zone. School zone? Yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, now listen to this one. <clears throat> That morning, <clears throat> we caught a rat here. And then my job is I'm trying to find a place to release it. <laughs> so, so um, I went searching for a, 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 a woods that um, far enough um, you know, where the residents are, so the rat wouldn't come into their homes. And uh, that's how I got my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good cause or is that a bad cause? I don't know. Um, talking about attachment and not attachment. When I first opened the letter, lots of things went on in my mind. I was thinking, holy, I was driving 26 miles over 20 miles zone. I'm not flying, I'm not doing it's it's only can you see you can see how slow it's at 26 miles and then my mind was arguing and then it kept saying that maybe I can uh, go to the judge and explain the situation and such and such and maybe he can uh, relieve me from from being fined. But then another thought came in. The United States of America hosted me so nice so beautiful. Why not this is a chance to render what they have done to me? And so I went to the court to pay my fine with my happy heart. <laughs> and, and, the, <laughs> and the court was so, so, so cheerful too. She was so cheerful to take the money. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but, but, uh, <coughs> actually, I have no regret. Um, part of this is that, uh, maybe because of the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the trainings I've got from Buddhism that uh, could have been a karma, could have been anything. And uh, it's not really a burden. And then today we have a talk with uh, QP about attachment and non attachment. And then you came in and then we said, you know, you sit down to practice. For non attachment, practicing is a form of attachment already. So, how can we uh, stay balanced under the attachment and non attachment? We often mistake with non attachment, which means that uh, you're going to relieve everything. You're going to renounce everything, so you become nothing. But that nothingness is another form of attachment. So how can we stay in balance with attachment and non-attachment and have the right understanding about non-attachment? Is it wrong? to drive a nice car? I don't think so. First, if you can afford it. Second, you must have done good in the past. So therefore, now you deserve to drive a nice car. You don't need to, uh, to downgrade yourself. What you need to do is have to understand. If you cannot afford driving a nice car, and then you try it, you try it, you try it, and then you work your tail off um, for that uh, enjoyment, that may be something else. Here, Having body means having attached. Of course, when we're thirsty, we have to drink. When we're hungry, we have to eat. And then at night, we have to rest. That is form of attachment. But the other thing is that we have to discern between, <clears throat> between the natural needs of the body and the desire which is beyond the natural needs of the body. That is important. Let's say that if you're hungry, food is ready in the house, but you don't want to eat that food. You would rather have it something that you desire the most and then you drive out there for sometimes for your craving that, that is attachment. My my old grandmaster have said have said that uh, um, if you're hungry a piece of sweet potato would suffice. So you don't need to go for fancy dishes and such and such. But I go a little bit beyond of that. If you can afford and uh, and and and, and uh, that fancy becomes available right there at hand, that is okay. So you would we don't have to downgrade ourselves in order to be to become non-attached. The only thing is that we understand 
to understand what this body is, what mind is, and that we live on. We live on in accordance to what's going on with this, this body and this mind. Just like that, uh, we still need to meditate. But if we fight during meditation, then that is attachment. And if we allow everything that flows through this body and the mind, then that is the practice of non-attachment. We don't ask for anything else. We just stay observed. Over the years, I've heard many stories about non-attachment, the practitioner of non-attachment, and uh, they refuse to take medicine because, oh, I practice non-attachment, so when I'm sick, I don't need to take any medicine, and such and such. If you're okay, then you can tolerate that. That's fine, no problem. <clears throat> But if you will really think that you need medicine, then please go on, take it. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong. But <clears throat> taking medication with an expectation that medication will cure your sickness, then that is attachment. You take medication, yes, but if if the medication does a job, it's okay. And if it doesn't do a job, it's okay too. And that is a form of non-attachment. So we respond what the needs for the body and for the mind. Because we live in, in, the, in a natural environment, which, uh, which is the body naturally in needs of, uh, of water and food, some kind of clothes and uh, you know uh, shelters and such and such. It's natural. But if we desire for something more than the basic one, then it might be something else. So the balance between the desire, the the, the attached and under and non attached is up down. We do. We respond to what is needed, but with that expectation. Now, this is this is the beauty of uh, with that expectation is that uh, like I often say that uh, before we did not understand. We fight with it, and then we have a little bit of wisdom. Then we become accepted. We become tolerated, tolerated with it. But now we open our arms to welcome whatever comes, good, bad, ugly, beauty. It all is part of life. Remember, it's all part of life. We cannot pick and choose what we wanted and then expect it. Okay, I wanted this to happen to me. No, it's not fair. It's not fair at all. Just like a, a QP was saying. There has to be a coin of two faces. When we understand that, we don't expect we become not attached. Mm. I forgot 
what I was saying. <laughs> oh, come on. See that how the mind jumps from this point to that point because I was uh, uh, I was thinking of one very interesting point that I want to explain and now it's gone. Two sides of the coin. Not yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I get that one, but another one that I want to steer to 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 a, a different issue, which is the same, uh, the same agenda. Well, now it's gone. So no. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm getting just like one of you guys. <laughs> It was a very, very beautiful example. Beautiful example. That's um, attachment. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> now yes. let it go. Now you're saying. Yes, yes. And now, okay, okay, this is good. If we all let it go, we let it go everything. What is the outcome? What is the inner result? It's all become silence. Because you don't have any idea, your idea become blank, and then uh, you have nothing to address, then everything becomes silence. See that? <laughs> so, remember you can see that point? Yeah. There's no emotion. Yeah, even, even uh, if, if, if you become non attached, uh, non, -at uh, non reactive to emotions, then then you don't have, there's no point to, to speak about, to talk about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very peaceful. Yeah, it's very peaceful. Very, very peaceful. Uh, oh, well, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, <coughs> yesterday we, uh, we went to uh, another temple and we had a gig there. And, and uh, I was able to play almost any song. So uh, uh, I was uh, I was like a, a center central spotlight because of <laughs> <laughs> the request I play the request I play uh, I mean I accompany uh, people sing. You brought your piano with you? Yes, <laughs> and and uh, um, I forget who I was. It, it just I completely merged myself into it. Uh, at that time, I did not think of anything at all. Mm -hmm. it, it just pure, pure joy. Uh, and uh, oh, <clears throat> when I repeat this. It's a form of attachment. See that? If I am attached, then I, I, I don't need to remember. And lots of people that uh, live in the past a lot. So they keep telling their story over, 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 and over again. Uh, Especially my mom. <laughs> um, somehow uh, people respected her, so uh, she was a central bank. Everything that uh, Carmen, my dad, uh, wanted something had to come to her. My sister wanted something had to come to her. And then if when sometimes that uh, she got mad, she she wouldn't open her <laughs> her safe to to hand to hand out the money, and then <clears throat> and then uh, um, and then my sister told me, Mom, what happened if you die? And when you die, can you bring all of that money money with you? Yes, I can. I have a way to bring that money where I would be when I die. <laughs> I don't know how. 
Co? Já no tak. That is another form of attachment. And another form of and, and, and the the metaphor of attachment is of my sister, my older sister. It's so easy to set up an account without her knowing it, and then you can handle the money without asking her every single penny, etc. Et it's so easy. I told my niece so. But she wouldn't do it. That is another form of attachment. See that? It's so easy to, to solve such a problem. But no, has to go through her. So I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's all about perspective, how you look into life. Um, you don't have to wait for 10 years. <laughs> you don't have to wait for next life. If you can change the perspective, and everything will be okay. And when I say everything will be okay, that doesn't mean that uh, that uh, uh, <coughs> the the, the uh, uh, whatever you are right now is going to change. No, it's going to stay the same. But the perspective, when the perspective changes, we come not attached. That's it. And where that non-attachment came from is from understanding. It's not from trying. Now, the beauty of that is that not from trying, but from understanding. When we understand, then we can handle situations that's rather kind of easy. In every, in any kind of situation, it's not only because of because of six of us here, each of us have a different issues. We all do have an issue. We all have problems, different problems. So, you know, same pile of doo doo. The only thing is how we look into that pile. Some people, uh, this is a great Zen master, Tim uh, Yakan said. We look at the, a, a pile of doo-doo, some disgusted, some stinky, just want to push it away, but some look at it, see the productive, see the productivity out of that pile. Can you see that? Yes, yes. So it's a different perspective. Then everything can change. Again, it's not that easy to change perspective. It's not that easy. If there is some kind of medication that can alter the brain to change that, I'll be very happy the first one to try because I have so many <laughs> things that I needed to change myself. But unfortunately, no. So we have to go to the old tradition, which is if it, uh, if uh, if if uh, such a thing that we uh, we habitized ourselves into it for twenty years, then it takes twenty years to undo it. So, but uh, I always have a. Uh, I do have a strong belief in in, uh, in, in in change. I do, I do, and um, and maybe because of that, every time I make some mistakes, I don't feel as depressed because I know I can change. I don't want to say that. If the, you cannot change the situation. Why do you get upset about what for if you cannot change the situation? And if you know that you can change the situation or the situation by impermanence can change, then why then we shouldn't be upset about? We shouldn't be depressed about. So every 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 way, every uh, uh, 
perspective look into the uh, matter, it becomes a, a win-win situation. See that? So it might be it might be kind of uh, kind of hard when one is uh, uh, in the pool, but it will change. It will change. I am one trillion, one billion, one 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 one. How many percent I said that it can change? Yes. And then from there that we, uh, we have a strong conviction that uh, um, we have a reason to live, we have a reason to deserve ourselves, uh, we, have a, we have a reason to, to be happy instead of uh, making ourselves miserable. Okay, please share your stories. Yes, David. Well, I was wondering, uh, Kui Pong, did, did you have some specific comments or thoughts about attachment that you, know, you started the discussion with? Oh, um, well, I'm trying to learn to detach so that I can move on from this certain situation at home. And I think I'm getting it sometimes and then but sometimes my ego gets in the way and and then I grab onto the problem again and I my mind starts to think like the monkey mind it caught. So but there are times when when I learn to when I get detached, I'm really at peace. I mean it's it's actually very peaceful. <laughs> So I'm trying to practice that detachment, um, but yeah, it, it does take time to <clears throat> put it in practice. Have you ever had a terrible loss or not? Yeah, I have. Yes. The, the only way I really got a little better at detaching was I had some terrible losses. Mm -hmm. And once you lose so much, then I think you gain some perspective and you don't worry as much about things because you've already experienced yeah. that kind yeah. of loss. And, and I was just saying, there's two sides to the coin. You have to suffer in order for you to appreciate the other side, the 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 you know what I call it the peaceful side, or the the side that is you know the non-suffering side. So you know you have to go through suffering first before you. You, you actually learn to appreciate the other side. Otherwise, for me, you know, I was telling Tai, when I was younger, I was pretty innocent and naive and just, I just went through life, enjoying life, and I didn't really notice any, any bad things. And I was just like, I go to work, I go to school, I go home, I sleep, I go out, I, you know, it's just all enjoyment. And now, you know, losing my parents and things like that. And so I, I'm, I'm learning about loss and I'm learning about letting go. And I'm learning not to get angry. So. It's a lot of learnings. It's like, it's, you know, at this stage in life, it's amazing. It's now that I'm starting to learn, <laughs> but it's learning the spiritual side instead of learning from, you know, co in college, going to college and learning all the, what you go through, education. This is more the spiritual side learning. So I feel like a baby sometimes when I go into the temple. I have no idea <laughs> what to do in, in a temple. Like last year, I, went, I came in and I have no idea, you know. So certain people took me under their wings and taught me how to do things in, in the temple. We're not supposed to eat like this. You're supposed to eat like this. <laughs> eat, no, don't eat with the, the chopstick. Eat with your spoon. <laughs> Use the chopstick to... <laughs> to grab food. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that again. So at the temple here, you know, it's family style. So when you get your food, there's usually your spoon or use your chopstick to get food into your bowl. Mm -hmm. Then you put down the chopstick, but you eat with your spoon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I had I had someone use yeah. their chopstick and 
like hit my hit my spoon. And so I was like, oh my god. And so I, I actually wait for her to to do stuff first, and then I follow her example. <laughs> so it felt like a baby, but I didn't mind. You know, it's just like you know, I'm here to learn. Mm -hmm. But literally, I I'm, I feel like um, you know, I'm fifty something. I'm fifty. I'm fifty two now. It's like I'm I'm relearning, or I'm. Me too. Yeah. It's a new environment, so it's always going to be that way. Yeah, we're always doing. <clears throat> but it, it's like a different life now. It's yeah. it's like. I'm, I'm actually, it's totally different from what I was before. Mm -hmm. It's, that's the change. I mean, and that's the scary part too, is mm -hmm. I'm not the same person I was a few years before. So, I was like, how can I be, you know, so naive? And, but I guess people learn at their own pace, yeah. And some people, Never learn. That's what I heard. But some some learn when they're very young. It's just the way it is. Yes. Um, there are four kinds of people. The people that uh, <coughs> with a good karma. So um, by chance, you know, at a young age, they they become realized. And uh, for some people, that uh, there has to be something, some lesson learned before they can realize that something is uh, going to be um, uh, four kinds of people the people are so easy that uh, only one advice would change them right away but other people is that um, has to be threatened in their own for them to change other kind of people is that uh, um, really you have to suffocate them for them to change. Wow. And other kind of people is that they have to experience that. They have to experience that so before they can change. Um, I used to have a client. He used to be a monk. <clears throat> and then he told me his story. He'd been in the temple for quite long. But then one day, he came to the master, Master, I want to disrobe and I want to get married. And uh, as he told me that the master was mad, uh, he took him down and then gave him a quite, quite a good whack and scolded him for that kind of reason. But somehow he would not change his mind. Uh, so his determination subdued the master. So the master has to let him go. He got married, and then he came, and, and then, and uh, sometimes he came to me that he told me that the master was right. I should have, I should have listened to him. <laughs> so, so even though that uh, the third person, that they, you know, with a a, a, a uh, strong measure of uh, of advice. Uh, wouldn't do good until that, that person really, really experienced the suffering. So, such a thing like that. And uh, we go back to uh, the matter of, uh, of, uh, of attachment and non-attachment. Uh, attachment, it, it has to, to do something with uh, egotism. So when you say, you are trying, you try to get an attachment, that trying, of course, that we have you have to have the balance between um, uh, between the, uh, the ego. First, you have to raise your thought. First, you have to have a desire to get out of the pool, to get out of the vortex, 
if you don't have that desire to get them out of the vortex, then you can, you will never get out of it. So you have to raise a desire. And same thing. Um, so I wrote, I, 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 I wrote back uh, uh, to my friend. Uh, this will respond to the Einstein statement, his statement. In his statement, it has something to do with the egotism. A doer. And then I advise him to, to watch the, the document of the brain who's in control. Even having said so, we still don't deny the existence of egotism. Of course, if we deny this body, then we become, well, we, we're going to have inclination of destroying this body. No, the destroying of this body is wrong. But we go one step further to unbind egotism. That is the non-attachment. So, so at first, we have to use some, uh, some, some, some uh, skillful means to, go, uh, to get a, us out of the vortex. And that skillful means is that we have to have a, a, uh, a desire. If we don't have a desire to, uh, uh, to be free from suffering, then we will never, never get out of that vortex of suffering. So which is good. Yep. And uh, like, like you said, that, uh, over the years, when you look back, and then you, you're going to see that, oh, there is a change, there will be change. But um, because of the change is so slow, just like the water that flow through a rock, First, we don't see we don't see the, the effect, you know, immediately. But uh, over the years, and then the rocks gonna worn out by the water, and we can see that. Same things. It takes patience, 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 patience. Yeah, aren't you a bit young to have lost both of your parents? And how did that affect you? That's what you? they told me. <laughs> I was uh, kind of young to deal with, with um, losing my parents this young. My dad passed away from pancreatic cancer, so it went, he went pretty quick. Um, my mom's passing was actually harder. She, has, um, she had Parkinson's. And watching her degrade was the hardest part. Mm. Yeah. She passed away in April, this April. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I lost my mom about eight years ago. It was extremely difficult to see her go downhill. Mm -hmm. She had pretty much held the family together. <clears throat> yeah, it was very tragic. And then I lost my father about 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. But he was he was ninety two, so he'd already lived a very long life. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, both of my parents had um, diseases, so hopefully I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> don't follow that path. Um, uh, um, it's not tragic. It's a natural process of life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that. Uh, uh, a form of passing away. It doesn't matter. We all have to. We all have to. So, uh, so when we understand, when, when we understand the, the process of, uh, of, of, uh, of the nature, then we can see the beauty of it. I don't know, I, I don't think that I might be lying that I don't, uh, I don't think that I'm afraid of that. I'm not afraid. And, uh, yes, then. Yeah, I'm not afraid of death either. Um, for my mom, the reason I, I thought it was tragic 
uh, was number one, she suffered a lot. And also it just took so much away from her. Um, and it was so long, the process she went through. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't think death is something to be feared. Personally. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, like I keep saying that uh, <clears throat> we have to understand the whole spectrum of the mind. Not only certain parts, certain parts, certain parts. The one that really turned me to Buddhism a lot is that there was one year four of my clients passed away. Two of them uh, are young in here in their twenties, and two of them uh, are old, natural cause. That's fine. But in within one year. Four of my clients passed away, and uh, like like you said, it's just just like a a, a wakening bell rang to me. What is the purpose of life? And such and such. <laughs> so, but as the more I understand, the more that I see the beauty of, uh, of the nature. Having this body means that we are subject to, to decay at the downhill, at the very end. And, you know, if we are lucky, then we pass away quick. If we... Yes. That's right. I'm oh. finishing it now. Okay. If we uh, if we not uh, uh, lucky, you know, pan pancreatic cancer is a really really worse one. It's really really terrible one. Yeah. 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 And I, it was hard because um, I work in an industry. I mean, I was actually handling drug supply for all the other oncology mm -hmm. um, cancer. You know, so. The minute I heard the, that the doctor said he has pancreatic cancer, I knew right away there's there's no drug out there for me. So that was the hardest part is for me, my profession is handling all the drugs for you know other cancer diseases, and I hear stories of people getting better by taking up all those other drugs, but there is no no drug for pancreatic cancer. And you know, I, I had to tell my dad there's there's nothing out there because he was very hopeful. You know, the, the doctor said there's chemo and then there's another drug, but it's really bad. You know, you're going to be, it's, it's going to wipe you out. You're, you're not going to enjoy life at all. So the decision is, do you want to enjoy the last few months of your life or do you want to go under chemo and <laughs> suffer under there? And so, um, but you know, at the end, he didn't, he, he didn't have time to do chemo at all. It was, he was done. <laughs> but it was, it was hard for me to tell him there's, there's no drug for pancreatic cancer at, at that time. Now, now there's clinical studies for pancreatic cancer all, all over the place. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, lots of people that, uh, Oh, when they get sick and then they say, you feel better, and said, blah, 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 or you get over it. And uh, sometimes I responded to them boldly that uh, when we get sick, we get better. It's only temporary. It's only temporary. When this body no longer exists, then there is no ailment. Is that true? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so it's it just it's just when we uh, oh, you know oh, uh, when we get over uh, a sickness, it's just a temporary. It's just a temporary. It prolongs life a little bit longer. But then at the very final battle, we're gonna lose. <laughs> we got to lose. No. <laughs> so what is the point of 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 of, of, of um, you know? Uh, being sad about. Instead, change, change the look, change the perspective, 
And when we, we when we change that, we can see the beauty of that. Yeah. No one's want to live forever. And then Jesus, you live forever, and then you look at your offspring die, and then you're still here, suffering <laughs> for them. So it's not really for them long. And moreover, that uh, in uh, in Buddhism, they said that uh, there will be a continuation. So it's not hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I often add to, you know, um, I see a lot of my American friends kind of do the same thing, you know. So instead of, you know, uh, calling it a funeral, you know, um, they call it, you know, celebration of life. So it's easier to reflect back and appreciate all the good, you know, gratitude, all the impact the person had on your life. Uh, for everyone, it might be a mentor, most of us are mom and dad family member, uh, a master, um, and to me, you know, that helps, but you still have to mourn. So it's, it's easier if you need to, to process it, to kind of just have, you know, your alone time for a short period, like maybe over a weekend or several weekends, just to kind of, you know, like separate yourself from everything else in the family, everything that's going on, and then process it. So you can kind of let go, so you can not attach, because sometimes, you know, logically you say so, but the emotion part's still there. So you have to just let yourself, you know, give yourself time to finally just let it go. Yes, 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 yes. This, is, this is a great point. That, uh, it's, it's not that we become non-attached, then, then we become you know, a, a, a close home. We, we don't have any emotion <laughs> over, over the tragic of the family members. No, 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 it's not. If you, if you have to cry, please do. If you don't, that's okay. Let it then, yes, yes. Yeah, mm. let it process. Yeah, yes. Then you'll feel better. Then you understand. But you have to let the emotion mm. and the logic process at the same time. That's what I've seen. And then, then you can truly let go. But if you let one, the logic reason, and then the other emotion comes up, but you don't let the two process each other, then you'll never have you know, closure. But, you know, like Tay said, you know, we're all, in the end, you know, if we understand, at least this, this body, you know, like I said, there's no Marcus. So if you understand, we all understand this body will go back to the four elements, and we have, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we're all subject to the same, same karma. The Buddha was, we, we are all the same. But you know, the conscious still goes on. If you see it that way, then it's, you know, it's not that thing, and you'll meet the same people over and over. But yeah, let yourself process it. Christian, anything from the younger generation? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I I think grief is actually is quite beautiful. Um, and I was just going to share uh, something I thought I found kind of funny during uh, meditation. Um, I did <clears throat> notice repeatedly, you know, the thought. I would kind of catch it, okay, you know, thought. And, um, and one of the thoughts was, you need to break the identifi the the spell of the identification with thought. <laughs> and then I go, oh, well, there's another thought. Yes. <laughs> and then when you when you say another thought, that is another yeah, thought. Yeah, I know. Mm. And I was just like, so I kind of like had a little chuckle with that. Um, what do you What do you mean identification with thought? Yeah. So when that. you're lost in thought. She's identifying each thought too much. Well, it's just, um, you could be lost in thought all day and not be aware of it at all. At least I can. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will suddenly come into, you know, being or whatever. And you mean like daydreaming? No. No? Just um, lost in thought. So if you're not aware that you're breathing, mm -hmm. you're, you're not in the moment. If you're anywhere else than in the senses of the body, you're in thought. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm talking about is the, um, the obsession with thought. Um, but I, I recently did a, um, I heard kind of an inquiry question where you, well, I asked inwardly, 
the question was, what is here now when there's no problem to solve? And you were saying, um, I forget the word that you use, but basically emptiness. And I definitely was there for a while and I, I, I was watching all of the thought that was coming with that because, um, and I actually wrote it down. So it was like, uh, boredom is a big one for me. It's like, this is too easy. Like this can't be it, what I'm looking for, <laughs> right? You know, and then like fear, cause it's like unknown, abyss, nothingness you know and just looking at that and um so yeah just interesting um so you mean like boredom versus like a state of bliss or something like that mm -hmm. not really a contrast mm -hmm. just but you said this can't be it so it would be like a state of bliss or something perhaps or not no, it's no. literally nothingness. Mm -hmm. It's like a black hole. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. That question though is very a powerful one, I think, because the the egoic mind is always solving a problem. That's what it does. So there's constantly seeking a problem and a problem to solve and solving the problem, and you're on a loop, right? So like when you said when I got here, the just be, it's like. That's too simple. No, no. We need to like, we need to have something to do <laughs> all the time, right? So that the mind is um, doing something. It has something to do. Right, all the time. All the time, yeah. yeah. So just in the being, it's, um, yeah, I, I flirt with that a lot. And uh, I know that that's what, it, what I'm looking for, but yet somehow I can't quite let go there. It's, uh, it's very interesting, very, very good perspective right there. Um, <clears throat> well, being is, is, a, uh, is a mental state, and if we try to achieve that being, that, that is a uh, and at a mental state. And of course, that Danny was right that um, the mind, the, 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 the natural process of the mind is that it processes itself. So we cannot stop it. So, so the balance between the being and the doing is very crucial, very important to understand. We don't need, uh, we don't need for the mind to undo itself or to stop itself thinking or so. We allow it, it goes on its own, own natural way, but without attachment, and that is being. <laughs> it's allowing. Yeah. We allow, allow everything. Let, let allow everything without attachment. Then we have the, the, uh, the uh, dual perspective between doing and being. And we don't get it. And, and then when doing it, being at first, uh, we separate ourselves in in, in those uh, two processes, the doing and the being. And then gradually, the doing and the being they merge together. There is there is no there is no separation between doing and being anymore. But but then we have a different perspective that there is no um, first. We have to apply the idea of non-attachment, but gradually that we gain the wisdom out of that. What wisdom of non-attachment is, then they become themselves. It's, it's, it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yes. Uh, speaking of wisdom, uh, Tahira, you haven't said anything tonight. Would you like to say anything? Uh, there is, maybe I can 
it goes slowly. Like, uh, can I share something please, to conclude? Please. Right. The audiobook I listened to about mindfulness is better than the chocolate was the name of the audiobook. <laughs> And he gave the examples of our thoughts, like uh, we are standing at the station, train station, and the trains are coming. So the trains are like a thought. So if one thought come, and if we ride into it, it will take us, and we'll come back to where we were, if if we don't, you know. <laughs> so the suggestion was to stay at the station, and when the thought come, like a train comes, just acknowledge and say bye bye don't write <laughs> i just i'm just sharing that it's called and your train train of thought that was about the thought and about the feelings <laughs> about the feelings um i just remember something i lost my father when i was 16 years old mm -hmm. and my cousin told me don't cry mm -hmm. and i stopped crying so when we're talking about letting go now I'm starting to work myself and learning. So I notice the, the tears comes up and somewhere I learn about the grief. So I see so much grief is kind of coming out tears. So um, this is about working through our emotions. And when we talk about um, attachment and not attachment, one of the attachment was like, we like something and we attach to, the other is we don't like it, but still attached to it. Yes. So like uh, today, I was in a deep meditation, had something happen, I took a break, and then a friend called me, and um, uh, I would use the late term of judging me, and uh, whatever I say, he would criticize, oh, you are meditating, and it's not like good, all oh, things and that, and, and I felt kind of uh, very uh, tension in my body, but when, you, when I listened to you, and I realized that I was attaching to certain opinions about whatever, you know, and I just should have let it go. Like, I'm attached to suffering. Like, you know, so we can attach to any kind of emotion or suffering and realize, need to learn more about the, uh, the vortex we are in, you know, the uh, emotions and ego. Um, my question, the real question was, uh, I forgot, but also I thought about, we, I learned somewhere that we never born and we're not down. So uh, I'm trying to understand that concept. We're never born and we're not going to die. It's all illusion. I think we're going to die. Yeah. Right? I don't know. My opinion is we are, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Just to agree, uh, <clears throat> everyone, almost everyone in that a, uh, a, uh, a man that come in the very early morning, he come in almost every day, almost, that uh, he pay respect to the statue outside. And if we open the door, he pay respect to the entire statue of the inside. And uh, the man, he has a he has a very high wisdom. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, Hinduism, and uh, the term that he was using um, trying to uh, trying to remember that. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's, it's a from uh, another uh, a similarity to the Buddha nature, that's all. That's all. Um, if we can <clears throat> understand, we go back to the, uh, the doing and the being. <clears throat> if we can understand the, do the doing, it will never cease to exist. Never cease to exist. Then we will understand that um, we're not dying at all. We are. We are just changing 
the state of mind, we just change into the form of, of this physical body, that's all. And therefore we we continue in a form in a different kind of form. In order to understand that, then we have to understand the being, which is the Buddha nature, which is the consciousness, and such and such. And they all they integrate it together just like space and matters. You cannot you cannot have in the space without matters. We cannot recognize matter without having space. And when we understand that, when we gain the wisdom of that, then we see that uh, nothing changes, nothing goes away. Yes, yes, this body can 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 uh, can die. You know the uh, the uh, hundreds of elements of uh, you know composed to this body, with this earth, you know this integrate. But then someday, that integration. That, that element, does it go away? Does it disappear into nothingness? No, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, go into this, go into that, go into there, and something, something, and wait for a, the opportunity to reunite it together. And then there, there we go, there is another being. Uh, it's kind of hard to understand. Yes. Yes, yeah, doing that all the time. We don't have a permanent self. Mm -hmm. Our, my body this year is almost 100% different mm -hmm. from what it was last year. Almost yes. every single atom yes. in my body is turned over. Yes. Um, all yes. the blood cells, blood cells only last yeah. Yeah. about three months. And you have totally new blood. Your skin is constantly shedding. Just every part of your body is turning over. I guess it that uh, Years, years ago that uh, you have a full full set of hair, right? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> so, so it's a, uh, it, but, again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether that a notion of, of, of a reincarnation or a notion of cease to exist. It doesn't matter. Because of either one, if you wish, then we become suffer. So we let it be. It's okay for the existence of the next life. It's okay. But it's even okay too for the non existence of the next life. It doesn't. And when we have that perspective, life becomes beautiful, beautiful. That is the flow of non attachment. I think because of you, you don't attach to, to, uh, to non existent, neither non existent nor existence. <laughs> Anything else? I still have some questions. Yes. <laughs> but, um, sorry, I forgot. But um, like there was a part of my life when uh, Daniel asked the question about losing something. There was a part of my life when I um, lost everything, even my identity. I was told I was crazy and I was put into mental hospital. I was not crazy. Mm -hmm. So that was extreme, like I have, uh, my ego was kind of. And that time was so peaceful. They diagnosed me with major depression and I was peaceful. And I said, where in the world, you know, I am so blissfully happy and peaceful that time everything was gone and there was that time but then other time just now today somebody was talking about what meditation like those are ideas like my ideas were attacked with my so i was attached to my opinions about and then i got upset with that so 
how to get out from uh, all the suffering or there's a time when I react because whatever happened in the past, maybe fear or some kind of trauma, post-traumatic stress and then they call it, I don't know. So I noticed myself doing a reacting to things. So how one can come out from you know, this kind of thing? Please share. I don't think it's easy. <coughs> That's my opinion. Well, you just have to start somewhere and take a step up, I guess, is all I could suggest. It's, it's certainly not easy. I've had my share of troubles, and um, life just isn't that easy. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> I think a good start is you know being involved with a group like this yeah. it's certainly a very positive thing yeah it's the same kind of with loss and loss and trauma you know kind of kind of very similar stuff just like um Dan, uh, daniel was saying you, know, you have to start somewhere and you have to just you know the main concept is letting go you know non-attachment to it because some people identify themselves with certain individuals or some things they have you know, uh, some things are like there's, we were talking about before, that some things are positive that we attach to, and some things are negative. Right. And sometimes, you know, if we identify ourselves as a victim, yeah. then it's hard to let go. Right. Yeah. But if you just accept, your, if you accept yourself as the way you are, of all of our experiences, good and bad, mm -hmm. then it's easier to start letting go. And that's the best way I can, I can you know, set the example for you, is that because we have a lot of good things that helped us too, to identify us. That we have a lot of bad things that happen to us and the easiest way you know is you know i don't know the easiest way to, the way i see it is introspection is look at yourself and balance it out and just you know process it little time like i said you'll feel emotions and then you have to at least for me you know use my logic to say you know it's you know we are, we are some of our parts and some of our experiences and then you can process it and start letting go that's the easiest way you know, for me to get, you know, sometimes you need guided meditation. You can't, like they said, you need Sangha. You can't just do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. some, some individuals, you need to go to like a, a Tay or Sukho or someone to help you, to help. And I remember the other Tay, Thich Nhat Hanh, that reminded, you know, way back then, he was like, you know, don't, you don't need to go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you know. The Tays at a lot of the temples in Sukho are free. And they, you know, they, because they're, it's like, a, Fiduciary, you know, fiduciary advisors, so same things, they have good intent to help you. <clears throat> so don't go to some place that's going to charge you money or, you know, give us medication. Um, better to find someone that, you know, do it naturally and help us guide us through that meditation and, and process through it. That's what I, you know, at least from my experience, that's what I recommend. <clears throat> and then with time, you'll learn to, to, to build those skills that they train you on and then to process things that happen to your life. Because we all have it. You, you know, we're all in the same process. We all have, yeah, yeah, balancing good and bad. We, we all make mistakes. We've all had experiences, you know. And so we're all in the same boat. Yes. So, um, Thank you. I yeah. appreciate you doing that. Right. So, like, you're, you're already reading a book. Yeah. You know, that could be helpful. It's a, it's a good idea to try that. Uh, what you would call a self help book. It's a very reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Um, no matter what's going on in your life, you always have to take care of your health, even if there are all these other problems. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have to make health your number one priority. And you always have to have, you know, something positive going on. And you know, like Christy said, we're always trying to do something. Our minds are always wanting yeah. to do something. Well, maybe that's not all so bad, you know, as long as it's not something obsessive and as long as it's toward a healthy goal. You know, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. To you be can progressive. volunteer yeah. to um, volunteer at the food bank and help yeah. Yeah. other people. By helping other people, it it actually makes you feel really good inside. Yeah, you know, like the mission. Um, what is it? That that cooks for the homeless. Meals on wheels and that kind of stuff. I'm Gus. I'm uh, in Seattle. Oh. The Union Gospel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they. Christmas, they usually have volunteer people come in and, <coughs> and you serve the homeless food. 
and just by doing that, it's, it's really that that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you. I think you said that you were meditating and someone called you. Is that what it was, or was it after? Because usually when I meditate, I put my phone on mindfulness, and I won't take any calls. I was actually went to a park. Oh, okay. And uh, everything was with me, like my phone and everything. Yeah. I finished my meditation actually. Oh, okay. okay. And a call came, and it was a long frame for a long oh. time. Mm -hmm. And then he started me to do this and that because he he doesn't do meditation, so he thought it was foolish to do and kind of those kind of. <laughs> yeah, you have people that. Yeah. <laughs> you have people that you know that have different opinions, and you just have to let it go. Yeah. So it, those individuals, I don't tell them what I do. That's what I realized yeah. after <laughs> listening to him that I was attached to, yeah. and we yeah. just let it go. Right. I was so, going to say, don't go to Seattle by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that part of town is bad. Because yeah. it's this homeless people, but it's good to help. Maybe go during the day. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Um, I did a lot of volunteer work, and yeah, I think it's a great idea that you suggested. Yeah, Christmas is a big time for volunteers. Just don't go in the, in the evening <laughs> around Pioneer Square. I suggest that thing too. Sometimes just take the time to not do anything. And like everyone's saying, being, and just you know, to learn about yourself, to sit and see what thoughts come up, what bubbles up. Because uh, I've noticed at least when we do certain things, yeah, it will get our mind off of the problem, but then eventually those thoughts come back. So sometimes it helps to do something to balance it with just time for yourself. Yeah, I've been actually taking care of a lady right now mm -hmm. since morning to evening, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of volunteering, you know, yeah. kind of in a way every day. But would you see having some space, you know? Yeah, you that might need time might need by yourself. I guess, yeah. But thank you. I'm sorry to talk about <laughs> But thank it's, you to everybody. It's great to uh, <coughs> to hear different you know, opinions and different problems. And uh, uh, I myself, I learned a lot from from you all. So uh, I truly appreciate uh, you know, beautiful minds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, of course. Um, We forget, we forget to uh, who we are quite often. And, uh, and therefore we dissatisfy, you know, we dissatisfy ourselves. But uh, like Marcus was saying that uh, this is who I am as this time being. Who am I? Who I am? I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm happy, such and such and such and such. That time being. <clears throat> and uh, allow that without alteration. We don't need to change who we are at that moment. But we don't, uh, the other thing is that we don't allow that current being into an action and that's it that's it that's how we stay as ease as who we are we don't need to change if i'm bad yes i'm bad we don't need to change that but we don't let that badness into an action then everything will be okay and uh, that's the process of, of, of understanding ourselves. So hopefully that uh, after this session that we can uh, we can understand more of ourselves about the attachment and our attachment and the union of non attachment and the attachment. Uh, so uh, the very crucial point is that uh, our perspectives uh, 
look at other matter as it is without adding any more ingredients into it, then everything will be okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Oh, thank you. Beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs>